let's talk about this. Let's talk about this because I have some mixed feelings about this movie, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to do my best not to do any spoilers in case you want to watch this movie or you're curious about it. Hey, hi, this is my, my, I'm a random person on the internet with the YouTube channel, Big Mouth, and I finally got is this the first movie I thought it would see of 2024? No, it is not. Okay, the first movie of 2024 that I imagined seeing was One Love with Bob Bla uh, One Love, the Bob Marley film. But uh, Lisa Frankenstein ended up being that movie. You know why? Because I'm like at work and I see a text. It's like, <laughs> Lisa Frankenstein, you want to see it? Now I'm, I've seen thumbnails of it. And I'm like not really even thinking about watching it. So instead of saying a flat no, I check out the trailer. It looks cute. Doesn't look like my kind of movie, being perfectly honest. Um, it looks like my younger self's kind of movie, which was more accurate. But, but, this friend, I've taken her to see many of a bad movie. We make it happen and I've lived to tell the tale. Now, Lisa Frankenstein is a comedy horror film written by Diablo Cody. Diablo Cody, she has done movies like Juno, Jennifer's Body. The uh, movie was directed by Zelda Williams and it's starring Catherine Newton, Cole Sprouse, Lisa Sobrino, Henry Elkenberry, Joe Crest, and Carlo Guccinino. I butchered so many of those names. This movie is about uh, Lisa Swallows. <laughs> I see what you did there. This is a story about Lisa Swallows. She's like this, you know, of course she's an outcast who um, is living with a stepsister, stepmother, and her birth father. Now, one of the things that happens in her past is that her mother gets killed while she's in the house and uh, she ends up moving in with her father and his new wife and the stepdaughter. Now, his parents were married at the time, her parents were married at the time of the murder, but he kind of moved on six months later remarried and she's now living with the wicked stepmother and this wonderful stepsister who treats her so well and the dad is pretty oblivious okay now the thing about this part of the storyline is it's never really solved you know i had so many suspicions about who could have killed the mother because there's something about um that it happened to her now she's in a situation where she's just trying to survive high school and life with some peace and she's got a dad who's oblivious, a, a stepsister who's constantly like, encouraging her and a mother who treats her like crap. But who killed her birth mother? You know, I'm thinking like, is it the father? Was it the stepwife? Was it her, you know? This is one thing I did not like was that it wasn't resolved. There was no answering of that question. So if you start, if you watch this movie and you're like waiting for that to be, forget it. Never brought up again, never solved. Just pretend it didn't happen, right? So Lisa, she's got this thing where she likes to visit uh, a, a graveyard, an abandoned graveyard. Like they said, it's like undesecrated or it's desecrated or something like that. And like it's haunted and all these things. But she thinks it's peaceful. She's like got this favorite headstone that has a bust of a young man who died young and unmarried. And uh, it's like her favorite place to visit. She like reads poems, leaves little presents, like tends his grave, right? But Lisa is like trying to get ready for this party that her stepsister's taking her. Her stepsister's name was Taffy. She, okay. All the people did their job well acting wise like everybody did their job well so they go to the party there's a guy that she likes that was there but she kind of gets a little embarrassed in front of him and then something happens and she ends up going to the grave and being like i wish i was with you there's a storm and this and the next day he literally comes to to see her and he and she's all like i didn't mean like that but it's like she, he's this protective guardian for her now so basically the rest of the movie is his, his he's trying the creature played by cole cole sprouse right he's trying to look out for her protect her she's helping him become more human like he's missing the ear they get an ear he's missing a hand they get a hand won't tell you anything about that you know they're kind of like doing this like give and take like the most balanced relationship if you think about it they're really doing a give and take there and she's like really wants to get together with this guy at school she likes meanwhile he's like mute but like definitely into her right so that's basically what the movie is about all right so what is my review of it first of all uh Catherine Newton she's great she's great in this movie Cole Sprouse he's he's so good but there's something about his body language his physicality because he doesn't talk he doesn't talk he just grunts and does things and has facial um expressions he did a really great job Carla Gutiano we all know her we all know her love her if you haven't seen Fall of the House at Lesher we could still be friends but correct yourself but uh she was up I said, bitch, who are you talking to? 
The colors were fun. The music was fun. It's very late 80s, really early 90s with the uh, style and colors. Now my review of it. Teenage gothic me, loner teenage gothic me writing poetry would have seen this movie and would have been in love. I probably would have watched this over, 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 over again. Grown ass adult me, it was cute. It was cute. It was cute. It was cute. Most likely I'll watch it again. My thing about this movie is I don't think going to the movie theater adds to experience. Having said that, do you need to go to theaters to watch it? Going to the theaters, I don't think really added much to the experience of watching this movie. You can easily watch this at home and be satisfied. Just to be honest. The other reason I'm like not saying run to the movie theaters and see it is because when you can stream it, I think you'll enjoy it more. The movie theater was quiet. There were, there was plenty of people here. It wasn't like a full house or anything, but it wasn't empty. This is one of those movies that I feel like is fun to react to because, you know, funny things happen, cute things happen, gross things happen. Like I felt myself reacting, but I had to be quiet. This movie, you kind of want to laugh out loud, react to blah, blah, blah. But it's hard to do that when the theater's so quiet. And like, I'm like, dude, are we watching the same movie? Cause I'm having a reaction, but it was, everyone was pretty stoic, quiet. So I think it'd be more fun to watch this at home, especially with a friend, because there are things that happen that are like, what, what, what are you doing? She's doing too much. What the heck is that? <clears throat> you know, because you kind of, you know, and you can't really do that in a movie theater. I wouldn't say skip it. I would say definitely when it's available on one of your streaming platforms, go for it. All right, so that's my review of the movie. Let me know if you guys watched it, what you think about it. And thanks for stopping by. Farewell.